All right, 718 here, Big 550 KTRS. All right, now that uh, everything's open except for, say, 141 and Highway 40, which should be opened up uh, either later today or early tomorrow, time to reassess, time to ask the questions, what is going on? Dr. Robert Holmes is with us, a National Flood Hazard Specialist. Good morning, doctor. Thanks for joining us. Doctor, are you there? Yep, I'm here. All right, good. Thanks for checking in. How bad were these, how bad was this rain? Was it a... 500-year rain? Uh, put it into perspective for it. How bad was this rain this last couple of weeks? Well, we have to talk about the rain versus the flood. So we can have a 500-year uh, rainstorm that does not generate a 500-year flood. So this rainstorm uh, was uh, approaching about a 100-year uh, rain event, uh, according to the Weather Service's uh, uh, statistics. Of course, USGS, uh, the agency I represent, we uh, monitor the river gauges, and uh, we're estimating the flood on the Merrimack somewhere around an 80-year event. Seems like this happened two years ago in 2015, so how can it be an 80-year event if it happened two years ago? Well, essentially, you gotta you got to remember that these are statistical measures, and so let's think of it in the terms of if I went out and sampled and tried to figure out what the probability of running into somebody that was six foot four, I would go out in the population, I'd grab maybe 100 people, and I would uh, fit a probability distribution to their height. We do the same thing with flood data. We collect data over time, and we fit a probability distribution to that. And as we get more data, that probability distribution can change. And so if we collect 1,000 people, we have a much better estimation of the probability of running into a six foot four man than we would if we only had 100 people. So if we have 50 or 100 years of record on the, on the rivers, we don't do as well estimating what that 100-year flood is as, as if we had 500 or 1,000 years of, of data. Obviously, in the United States, we, some of our oldest gauges are just slightly over 100 years old. So those numbers change through time as we get more data. And then we have the fact, the specter, that climate is variable. We've had periods uh, that we've measured uh, uh, in, in records, uh, you know, what we call paleohydrology, where we can go back in, uh, especially in the West, and we can measure floods that happened 900 years ago just from the deposits and carbon dating, and we can see that it was a, a lot wetter, say, in the Black Hills of South Dakota 900 years ago than it was in recent times, and then we've gotten back into another wet cycle. And then, obviously, you've got the specter of, uh, the potential for man-induced um, uh, climate change, which I'm not, you know, prepared to, you know, I'm not an expert in, in climate or right. climatology. I'm just a river guy, but uh, but I know I do look at a lot of flood records. So explain, so did anything surprise you over the last couple of years with the rain, the flood, and the combination of inches and where all the water went? Anything surprise you? Well, I mean, uh, getting two floods of this magnitude uh, in the Merrimack Basin, the Gasconade Basin is very unusual, but it's not, it's not, un, you know, it, the, the, the specter, the probability is not unlikely. I mean, if you look at the 100-year flood, which says, all that is says that in any given year, we have a 1% chance or, or 1 in 99 odds of happening in any given year. You can have in the, in the cycle of a 30-year mortgage, if we truly knew what the 100-year flood was, the probability of having a 100-year flood in 30 years is, is 25%, a one in four. And so, you know, it's not unheard of, I mean, to have this. We are in a wetter cycle. There's no doubt about it. I mean, you can look at our flood data, and you can see that we are having more floods in the recent last 10, 15, 20 years than we'd had previously. Of course, the 50s were dry, a lot of drought, uh, you know, 30s, you know, the Dust Bowl in Oklahoma. So we did have a dry uh period in the mid 20th century but we are getting into a much wetter say since since the late 80s into the 90s and and currently uh, we're we're in a much wetter cycle doctor uh with the levee in valley park and some of the other um flood and river management um projects that have taken place over the last number of years has it created a bigger problem for flooding either uh, above or below the actual work well, I mean, you have to look at whenever we do, uh, you know, we have man uh, intersecting with a natural environment, uh, you have, you're going to have problems, okay? If you build in the floodplain, not a good idea. We try to, to basically uh, uh, mitigate that by building levees, or in some cases we'll get flood reservoirs, and it's a trade-off. It's a societal decision. 
And so we decide, you know, basically we have a legacy of having like the city of St. Louis is right along the Mississippi River just because of the history. And so you're struck with a lot of infrastructure, so you have to do something. And so the Corps and on the Mississippi, that is, they build flood reservoirs, they build levees. Levees will increase flood height, but they mitigate that by trying to hold back water in things like Clarence Cannon and Lake Wapapello and Carlisle Lake over in Illinois, Wren Lake. And so there's a trade-off. Obviously, those don't come without cost, and you do have times when, as we get into wetter cycles, those were designed on data that was collected, and you know, most of those were built in the, in the 50s and 60s, which was a drier time. So we constantly, as engineers, have to keep reevaluating our infrastructure for, for water resources, uh, you know, flood mitigation, that kind of thing. Uh, wasn't it Laclede who picked where the arch is and said, hey, this place is a natural flood wall? And the arch grounds have never flooded? Well, you know, um, I, I'm not sure about that history, but, you know, the, the St, city of St. Louis has a flood wall. So without that flood wall, there are various areas that would flood. Say south of the brewery down, uh, down at the foot of Arsenal Street, that would definitely be underwater uh, during floods. That, that, you know, you, you get into that area. The arch, you know, you have the railroad that came through there and they built that out, up. So the arch ground... Uh, I don't know what that looked like in the late 1700s, early 1800s, but right. I suspect that was a lot lower. All right, fair enough. All right, fair enough. Uh, <laughs> uh, going forward, um, since this is a – oh, I, I know what I wanted to ask you. Um, so the Mississippi River hasn't flooded this go-around. The Missouri River hasn't flooded. It's the Merrimack. Is that what you mean when you say it was a rainstorm or a rain as opposed to a flood issue? No, I mean, the, the, the Missouri and the Mississippi River did flood. It's just that it, it wasn't at the record levels. I mean, at St. Louis, you know, 93 is, 1993 is the flood of record. So we had a lot of rain, and it got those rivers up. And uh, we are coming down off that uh, flood crest on the Mississippi. We had our field staff at Chester and Thebes over the weekend. They're back again there today making flow measurements. We're still coming off. We're in that major flood uh, range, uh, according to the National Weather Service, what they characterize as major, moderate, uh, minor flooding. We're still in that major flood range in Chester and Thebes and Cape Girardeau, Missouri. That's coming down. But, uh, yeah, no, we had a flood on the Missouri and the Mississippi. It's just it didn't get the attention the Merrimack did because the Merrimack shut down uh, interstates. It's caused a lot of people, uh, their homes to flood, and, you know, catastrophically. It's a, it's a r real uh, bad situation there, and that's got garnering the attention. Dr. Robert Holmes, National Flood Hazard Specialist for the U.S. Geological Survey. Uh, doctor, thank you for your time. You bet, McGraw. You got it. Interesting stuff. 726, Big 550, KTRS. Uh, Mother's Day is um, this 